BJ Morgan, come I've got my guest here, Tim Burdick from Thunderworks Games. We're talking spicy hot games, and one of those is a game I got to play last year and has also had a super successful Kickstarter, and that's Role Play Adventures by those, those two brothers that have helped Keith flesh out the world. If you like rolling dice and you like the adventure part, Role Play Adventures gives you both, Tim? It gives you both, yeah. So the, the birth of Role Play Adventures, I, I don't know if anybody, I, I happen to dig these out there. Do y'all remember sort of the create uh, choose your own adventure books? This is uh, the um, uh, Tunnels and Trolls. Tunnels and Trolls was uh, from the late seventies, early eighties, but there was also uh, the Dungeons and Dragons ones. Um, that's where role player adventures came from. It's remembering those choose your own adventure style books where you make decisions, and the decisions that you make change the storyline. So if you decide to fight the monster or something happens if you decide to run away something else happens right um, and in the midst of that we utilized the role player mechanic of the dice drafting so you're going to draw dice in order to uh, do skill checks or or uh, uh, to, to fight uh, in battle so you're going to have to get certain dice out of the bag and you're going to have skills that will allow you to change those dice rolls either increasing them or decreasing them um, so it has that same feeling to it. All the time, the decisions that you make will change what the adventure does. So if you do a certain thing and you fail your skill check in trying to negotiate with someone, well, now you have to turn to page whatever, and you go to that page and read that entry, and now something else happens. Maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. Um, and uh, so the, the storyline develops that, like that way. Over and 12 different books so there's 12 different adventures in the game and the decisions you make tim sometimes they really come back i mean you in fact when you make the decision there's a couple of times when i was playing those i think it's the first three scenarios that i played yeah. the first three books which by the way uh D, D fans from the 80s and 70s they've got that kind of feel like you're opening up a module and you're yeah. starting this whole adventure i love that 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 made me very happy tim but I remember a couple of times where I'm going, oh, I know if I make this decision here, there's, there's going to be something down the road that's going to happen. And they're yeah. looking for some of those. I don't want to spoil anything, you know, for people. Just understand there's more than just make a decision, you yeah. know, and then nothing happens. Remember in Above and Below, it was kind of like you make a decision. It just happens in that 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 experience. And then in Near and Far, you know, he, he took the world of ours game a little bigger because it felt like some of the things would would matter later on. Well, role play adventures just puts that on steroids. Yeah, so so when you make a certain decision to influence uh, something, you may uh, garner favor with one of the three factions, or you may lose favor with uh, one of the factions. And as the adventures develop, that favor or lack of favor is going to change the way that things develop. It is really amazing. It took uh, it's it's over really three years in the making because. The amount of writing that it took and uh, playtesting, all of the pathways have to work, right? When you do these choose-your-own-adventure books, uh, you have to make sure that you don't end up in an infinite loop right. or that uh, the, the storyline doesn't end up uh, just at a dead end, right? So um, you have to be sure that these stories all uh, interconnect and that these decisions uh, have real consequences. So it took a lot of time, but uh, the final product – uh, role play adventures is amazing and people can pick this up and they have don't have to know anything about role player they don't ever have to play any of the other games it will be a campaign style uh, game that they can play with uh, their friends they can play it solo you can play it solo and then you can play with your friends because when you play it the second time the decisions that you make are going to be different and it's going to change uh, the outcome yeah, because you're gonna you're gonna have different influence with the three. If I remember right, three factions, you know, it, different influence with them, so the storyline could play. What's yeah. this uh, picture that you sent me here? Is that is that new content for the adventures itself? Yeah, So there was a, uh, a an added uh, a kind of storyline that interconnects through all of the twelve adventure books that are in the base game. Um, that has a, a kind of a extra campaign. Um, that that was a uh, part of the Kickstarter campaign and will be available um, separately for retail. Um, but it, it adds another dimension. 
And I'm sure it's no secret, you can imagine, right? We've created something that we can continue to write adventures for. And I'll give you a little bit of, because uh, we want some spice, right? We want, we want to get some spicy hotness. Uh, we are working on um, a digital uh, platform that will allow people to create their own adventures. So, so there, there will be a, a, a kind of um, companion app that they will be able to develop a map, develop certain uh, scenarios. Um, so a kind of creating tool. You don't, maybe you just like to play the game and play the adventures somebody else wrote, but a lot of us may want to, you know, create our own. So we're going to have that uh, digital implementation that will allow people to create those, those this, scenarios themselves. This is going to go back for some people, but there was a, a computer game called Neverwinter Nights, and I just yeah. loved that thing. But what I really liked about it is fans would create – it was a, kind of an open source, open source. Fans would create these modules that you could then take your characters in to play these little scenarios. And some of them just deviated – far away from the Neverwinter Nights campaign. I mean, it was just these new types of uh, campaigns you could follow. So good. Yeah. I love the idea of you're, you're allowing the fans to develop and create these new role-play adventures. Yeah, Keith has always been um, really open to, to fan-based uh, um, stuff. And uh, so, I mean, you just go on to any of our games on BGG and you'll see uh, there's fans developing uh, solo challenges for role players. So we've got a couple super fans that are, uh, creating these monthly solo challenges, giving a set of uh, uh, kind of format, uh, different things that you'll start off with, different dice you'll start off with and see what you can do. Um, and uh, it's so that's all about, you know, fans creating maps for uh, cartographers. Um, he's all about it. You know, if, if people love a game, um, they want to, to take it a step further. Great. We love it. You know, go for it. And that's role player adventures. What's the timeline? When when are we expecting that to get to the Kickstarter backers? That will be the same time. So that should be uh, uh, Gen Con as well. Big, big, big releases this summer. Yeah. 